Hello, and welcome to this demo of Script Library Support, a feature of Spirant iTest. With Script Library Support, you can now very easily import existing scripting libraries into iTest Quick Calls, which provide a filtered drop down list of all the functions in the library and an interactive session to execute those commands. Today, we will import a tickle library, in this case, the HL Tappy library for Spirant Test Center and then use iTest to execute some commands to start some traffic on a chassis and then check the statistics. We will then create an automated test case from this capture and re-execute to check the results. A few words on the iTest GUI for those who are unfamiliar. On the left hand side is what we call the activities pane. As you can see it's broken down into five distinct activities. So as you click through each of these activities iTest will guide you through the steps necessary to complete the activity. We'll be spending most of our time today in develop a test case. On the right hand side is where we will have things such as our interactive sessions, our test cases, our test reports, any kind of dynamic content that we're working on. So let's go ahead and import the HL Tappy library. So if we go ahead and select file, import, we get a pop-up window and we can select external procedure libraries. So if I go ahead and click next, you can see that we have one tickle agent, as we call it, running. And basically all an agent is is just a process that's monitoring the libraries. So if we take a look here now, we can expand the global namespace and scroll down to STH, which is the library we're interested in. And if I go ahead and select that, it's a relatively large library, so it might take a minute to parse through. We'll get the checkbox there, and then when we click Finish, we'll be able to import all of those library functions into iTest Quick Calls. And we'll show how iTest Quick Calls work in a few minutes. But essentially this will allow us to interactively execute library functions inside of iTest. But we'll be capturing all of those interactions and it's quite easy then to create a repeatable automated test case. Alright, looks like that's finished so let's go ahead and click Next. And now this is just some housekeeping where we need to store the library. So we'll just select an area on disk, and we'll select the same one here, so I'll just do a copy-paste. And we just need to give it a name. So I'll just call it uh, SHL Tappy Quick Call Library, and SHL Tappy. The session profile is just how we describe the connection into uh, the library. So we'll just go ahead and click Finish. And while that's populating, we can now start thinking about what we want to do. So what we're going to do is essentially just connect to the chassis, start some traffic, uh, check a couple of stats, and then close the session. All right, so it looks like that worked. And now we're ready to go ahead and start using the library. So now that we've imported this library in iTest, we can make use of it by using those quick calls. And so what the quick calls really are is wrapping library functions or any really procedure function. So in this case, it's a library, but you can really import any kind of code that you may have in your environment. And so iTest will create quick calls, which basically provides an abstraction layer such that you don't necessarily have to know what the code underneath them is doing or know how to script. So what exactly does that look like? So if we take a look over here in the activities view, we can click on develop a test case. We'll create a new one. And we'll just give it a name and select our topology. And so here's our traffic generator. So again, instead of having to write code, what we can do is make use of those quick calls. So if I click on add steps by capturing, and I open up our session into the library, we now can use this button here called Quick Call. So if I click on that button, you'll see we get a window that pops up with a list of functions. These functions happen to be the functions that were part of that STH namespace or library that we sourced in. Now again, this could be anything. So if I go ahead and click or type connect, that happens to be the function I want to use, I get this nice filter view and I have a place here where I can input my arguments. So in this case I want to type device and the IP address which is 10.47.73.51 
And then I want to give it a port list. So we're going to use two ports. We're going to use one three and one four. So now what this will do is it'll actually execute the code underneath that API command, but I don't have to know anything about it. So I can just go ahead and click OK. And it's invoking that procedure, as you can see here, and then we should get some output from the chassis to indicate that we have successfully connected. So what we can see down here in the lower left is, is that we're capturing the actual command. So you can see here's the command we sent. And we're also going to be capturing the output that comes back from the device. So when we actually put this into a test case, we'll be able to have access to this output. So we see we have two port handles here, port 1 and port 2. So we're going to use those as we go forward. So the rest of this uh, scenario really involves just setting up the traffic, starting the traffic, and then parsing some stats. So we're going to use the same method of going through the quick calls, and so I will do that offline, but when we come back, we'll have that completed, and then we'll show how you would put it into a test case, and then add some analysis. Okay, so we've gone through and executed the rest of the commands we needed using the quick call menu. So we just created our stream blocks, we went ahead and started our traffic, got our statistics out, which we can see here, and then we just did some cleanup. So now we have all of our steps down here, so we can close this session out, and now click on this button, and we now have all of the commands we just executed in this document. So as you can see, it's pretty easy to read. You can see that we do open connect, we do some traffic config, some control, some stats, and then some cleanup. And then we can look over here to see what we actually sent to the library, so the actual arguments that we sent. Now this is actually an executable test case. So we could actually run this again now in an automated fashion and execute these commands again. But we also can use this test case to do some analysis so that we can then make informed decisions in an automated way. So let's walk through just adding some simple analysis to this and then we'll run it again in an automated way and take a look at the report that we get out. Okay, let's add some simple analysis to this test case so that we can now automate it and then have it determine pass-fail for us. So we mentioned that obviously we capture all of the steps that we executed, and we see those here, but we also capture the responses. So if we look at step 7, and if we look at the response window down here, you can see we have the output from the show statistics API command. And so here we have a blue box around key pieces of information. So we're just going to check the total packet bytes. And these are received total packet bytes. Now, what it shows here is the output from the last time this command was executed. So this was when we were running the steps manually. Now what we're going to do here is just add a sleep command between when we actually start the traffic and when we check the stats. So I can just type that in. And we'll make that five seconds. So that the next time this runs, when we automate it, this number should be a lot less. But I test is smart enough to know, and we'll still put the blue box around it and get the proper number. So what we can do with these blue boxes is use them to add analysis without having to write some clunky regular expression. So if I click down at the bottom here to return to develop a test case, and I click on Analyze Response, I can now click on Add Rule and add what we call an analysis rule. And this wizard will guide me through that process. So I want to validate something in this response. So I want to validate that that number is greater than zero. Uh, the traffic stats, we want to select that specific step. So that's the correct step. We want to compare the value to a specific value. And if we click on Query, then we can have access here to the information in the blue box. So again, this is a dynamic query, so the next time we run this, it should be a much smaller number, since we're only going to send traffic for five seconds. So I'll click Next, and I don't want it to be equal to that specific number. I really want it to be greater than the number zero. So what this is saying is, is that whenever we run this, whatever number is inside that blue box, as long as it's greater than zero, then this test case will pass. And then this is essentially just asking us, what do you want to do in a true condition, and what do you want to do in a false condition? So we'll leave the defaults here, but you can do things such as 
call cleanup procedures and whatnot if it fails. All this is going to do is would just uh, give us a fail condition and output a message. And then we'll click finish. So now you can see we have this rule, a summary of what we just did, attached to that step. And notice we have a green highlighting in the box now, which is indicating that this is indeed a passing condition. So now what we can do is click on return to develop a test case and click execute. So now iTest is going to replay these steps automatically and also do the analysis. So as you can see here, here's the same session that we executed the quick calls in, but now iTest is executing the steps that we went through. So this entire process will take about a minute and a half. So in the interest of time, I'll just pause the video while the steps are executing, and then we'll just take a look at the output once it's finished. Okay, so the execution is finished. If we look over here on the left-hand side, we can get a summary of some interesting information, including the execution time, that the overall test case had passed, and if we mouse over here, we can see that our query uh, was about, well, certainly bigger than zero, and so that that is a passing condition. So what I can do now is click on the stats command again, and now we have the new number, and what I could do also is click here and open up a test report. So this is a historical record of what we just did. So you can see it's time stamped. We get an overall pass and again access to the response data. So if we click on that step and then click here you can see we have highlighting and the number. And of course we have all the other statistics as well. Now the reason we don't see blue boxes here is because again this is a historical record. Well, this concludes the demonstration of script library support, and thank you very much for watching.